Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mr. Midi tutorial, we'll be taking a look at false color and how it will make you a more confident and competent colorist. I've spent way too long avoiding this because I was being a snob and just looking at a waveform, but thanks to a new plugin that's out, it is an amazing feature. So first, I'm gonna teach you how to do it the free way, and second, we'll talk about the false color plugin, which is great, and you should get, you can use the code Theo at checkout for 15% off. I know I'm, I'm a shill for time and pixels, but gosh darn, the plugins are just so good. All right, so first we'll talk about what false color is. So we'll hop into Resolve, and I'll apply the false color plugin. And if we look at this, it makes the image look terrible, right? But what this is, is actually a 3D waveform, um, basically. So our normal waveform is the x-axis of the image down here on the x-axis, and then the y-axis is the brightness of those pixels in the column on the x-axis. So if we turn this off, you can see you know, here it's brighter in the middle. This is where she is. This is the sort of um, background stuff. So pretty nice and useful. But false color gives us three dimensions. So the X is the X pixels, the Y is the Y pixels, and then the color value is actually the brightness value. So now you can see if I'm going to switch to my favorite preset, which is the Flanders one, you can see the midtones of our skin are in midtones. The highlights are in these highlights. The darks are down there dark. And you can see via the scale, what that is. So you can easily make this yourself with a LUT. So we'll hop over into Photoshop. And here you see I've got the Ansel Adams zone system, which is a nice way of judging exposure. And what you can do is go and create a gradient map and then open this up and you can define stuff however you want it to be. So here we'll have black be black. We'll make our darks like a purpley color. We'll make our highlights like a yellowy color. We'll make our midtones a gray color and we'll duplicate that one. And I can see as we drag these around, it sort of highlights different parts of the system. So we'll go from middle gray to very light skin as gray. I think that sounds pretty nice. And then we can adjust our little handles here. And you know, maybe we'll even give ourselves another level of detail down in our shadows and we'll give it some blue. So we can distinguish between our very dark darks and our less dark darks. And now you can see we've got a nice gradient from pure black to pure white that now we can judge. You know, we want our skin to be in about this gray area. So that's very nice. You can, of course, go and save this off as a 3D LUT. So hit OK there. And then go to File, Export, Color Lookup Tables. And this one doesn't have a background. So we'll bring in a quick image here and we'll just copy our gradient ramp over. So there you go. Now our image has a background image. And we'll drag our color or our gradient on there. You can see we're getting excellent false color action on that image. Then we'll go to File, Export, Color Lookup Tables. There we go. I mean, we don't really need a particularly high quality thing here. I just need the cube for this. We will call this Simple False Color 01, and then hit OK. And now I will go ahead and save this where the LUTs are saved. And I'll make a new folder called false color and OK. And there we go. So now if we hop over into Resolve, we'll go to our preferences and go to color management. And we'll just hit update our lists for our LUTs and then hit save. And now if we go over to our LUT section, you can see we've got our false color LUTs and we can drag this on. You can see we've got you know our skin about where we want it to be. We've got our darks and our darks, and then got highlights up there. So as you do your primary stuff, you can see if we make this overexposed, you can see it's getting more overexposed. As we get something hitting white, you see we've got white on there. So a pretty handy little thing. So that's a nice free way to do it. I'll put this LUT on my website so you can download it if you want to use it. But now let's talk about the false color plugin and why it's worth your 30-ish bucks. Less than that if you use the promo code Theo at checkout. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to our timeline section. So this will apply the false color to all of our clips. So I will drag false color on. And now that's looking good. And I'm going to change this to the Flanders preset because I like that. And now we've got, you know, many different options. So we can choose to show this scale. So this shows us, you know, just think of this as your Ansel Adams zone system from 0 to 10 instead of 0 to 100. And you've got it. So we've got you know, around the 60s. So if we hop back over to our thing here, that'll be about six. So average Caucasian skin. I think Allie's about average Caucasian skin. And you've got all the things around it. So that's very nice. 
and they even have a saturation mode, which I don't super duper get, but I'm sure is very interesting. <laughs> and then you can also change this to be a sharp transition, which is nice, or a smooth, or a gradient, which is my preferred. Change the processing mode, keep the thumbnail preview disabled, and now we get to the, the killer feature of this, the remote section. What does this remote mean? Well, if we open up the remote, Oh my goodness, we get we get it in another monitor. So we get, and this plays back with it. So if we play this back, you can see, oh ho ho. So Time and Pixels also has where you can like just get this without the false color where it's just the monitor thing. So if you don't have a deck link or something, that's another thing to check out. You can try and see if the promo code works on that too. It might or it might not. But now, because I have three monitors, so I'll put up a picture of what my workspace looks like three GUI monitors and then a grading monitor. So I can have the two monitor workspace and I can have this off to the side and I can always be checking this and you see it doesn't render the false color in here. So it is just the false color on the other monitor. So you can grade away really easily on the timeline. You just have this extra um, like scope off to the side and be super great. And this helps out so much because I know, especially whenever I changed monitors a while ago, I just had no confidence with my ability to judge luminance because I was switching monitors. I was like, what's going on? And the other one was goofy. I don't know. But now you can know for, for certainty that your skin is in the right place and your other stuff is in the right place. And it's just so nice and easy and so good. And you can, of course, I'll go ahead and close this. You can, of course, save these out as LUTs also. So if you want to load them up into a camera or something, and you can edit these presets around. So just like in Photoshop, like we were doing, you can edit around and change. Say you want this to not be green. Maybe you want it to be pink. You can do that super easily. And of course, change things around. Like maybe you want a little more narrow section here for your skin tones. Look at how great that is. So this is a steal. This is, if I had stamps of approval, this would be a Theo Meissner must buy stamp. Because like I said, when I first saw it, I thought it was dumb. But now you had the second monitor off of it. Boy, that is a that is a game changer. Like I said, I reached out to Tom. He said, you guys can get some, some percent off if you put in the promo code Theo. I also get a kickback from that. So that's great. And this is going to, this has changed, changed the way I approach stuff. So everything is just so much faster and easier now. And you have so much more confidence with where you're putting your image at, which before I was a little self-conscious about. But now I know, hey, my values are where they're supposed to be. So screw you if you don't like it. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. I had fun making it. Um, go give Tom and Pixels a check out. Tom's a cool dude, he knows what he's doing. Tell him thanks for giving us promo codes because that's always nice. Also be sure to check out meastnewmedia.com slash products where we don't have any cool plugins like this yet, but I'll put the false color let on there for you to play around with if you just want something goofy to goof around with. The stuff, in here are going to be much better than the ones I make just goofing around in between the time of making this and posting this because, you know, I'm never going to use them. I've got the plugin and the plugin is amazing. Um, but, you know, I know we don't all have money to spend on plugins. So if you just want to play around with the LUT, that's fine. Just make sure that you disable it before you render because, you know, that'd be no good. Also, whenever you have the Time and Pixels plugin in the remote section, it doesn't render the false color on your export. So you can just leave it open. So open remote. And of course, whenever you put this on the timeline, like we did, you can go through all of your other shots and still have your false color open. So you see this one might be a little bit on the bright side. I'm just gonna pop this over into another window. Or I guess what I should do is, is I should close this and just show you what it looks like on here. So I'll delete this. And now you can see we can just dial this back down. So it's not quite as hot. That might be a little bit low because it is you know, some sun on there. But now, like I said, it's just great with the remote. There we go. Now it's a little more even. So before, a little over. Now it's a little smoother. Nice. So anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough. Be sure to subscribe to Meast Media YouTube channel for more stuff like this. If you know of any really cool plugins like this, I'm not normally a plugins guy, but these tools, um, like the Nob Color Remap, False Color Plugin, and 3D Lut Creator, those, those are very interesting to me. Cool super zoom transitions and glitch transitions are not interesting to me. Um, so yeah, if you know of that stuff, let me know. I love, I like tools. I don't like gimmicks. So these are some good tools. Um, leave a comment in the video. I mean, you, you guys are 
If you guys are smart, do do the stuff people tell you to do at the end of YouTube videos. Check out mecmedia.com slash products. Check out Time and Pixels. Use the code Theo at checkout for 15% off. Once again, I've been Theo with Mecmedia. We have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.